Hello everyone, and welcome to April the 18th, Day 18 of Vita. My name, of course, is Artemidge, and today we'll be touching on mental health still, but I don't imagine that this is going to be a discussion that's too difficult for anyone to handle. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about trying to find help. Now, with that in mind, it's still a mental health discussion, and some people may still have discomforts, either with their own situation, a situation they're helping someone go through, or may just find this boring. If you're the latter, I'm sorry, this probably isn't the channel for you overall. I mean, there's going to be bits that you'll enjoy, but mental health is absolutely a part of what I do, so probably find better content elsewhere. If this is a topic that's a little sore for you, then maybe try and get yourself in a better headspace and come back and watch this video. Everyone else, let's have a talk. She wants to be known. Do you want to say hi to the people? Let's make an angry kitty. You're letting me down. I wanted your rage. So getting help can come in a variety of forms, and part of that is because there's no catch-all solution when it comes to mental health and treatments for a variety of reasons. The main one being at most levels that you'll encounter on a day-to-day -day basis is just personality differences. Now. The way that I interact with people is obviously not the same way everyone else reacts with people or the way that you act with people is going to differ from your siblings or parents or your closest friends. That's just the matter of people's development. That being said, a lot of people have a great deal of issue even in saying that they need help. I mean, you can have someone who's very close to you and has been trying to be that help for you, saying, I can't be enough. I know I'm not doing enough to make a difference. I might be keeping you on the edge, but you are still on the edge. You need to find something else. And a lot of people are reluctant to reach out beyond that, even to a professional level. Now, that's not one I can entirely understand personally. I, under I know that a lot of people find admitting certain medical issues embarrassing, and this might be amongst them. But that's entirely what your medical practitioners are there for. Refusing that offhand just because it's embarrassing or it means admitting there is a problem isn't going to change your circumstances. So for your own sake, keep an open mind on that. Because they're not just going to be a case of you walk in and they're going to hand you a bottle of pills. They're going to ask you about what you're experiencing and what kind of issues seem to make it easier or more difficult. And they're going to come up with an action plan that, that you both agree upon. Some of these treatments may include medication that you can get just from your family doctor. Some of these may be referrals to someone more specialized, like a psychiatrist. Some might be referral to group aid programs. And all of these are valid options. They are not going to be the right options for everyone for a variety of reasons. Let's talk on, talk on a few of the options individually. First is the one that most people have a fear of, and that is the medication. And the big fear I hear a lot is they don't want the medication to change who they are. They don't want to become dependent on some chemical. They don't want to need something additional put in them. Here's the thing when it comes to medications. You're not putting in something that isn't supposed to be there. You're, su supplement you're supplementing something that isn't there enough. These are the same chemicals that even healthy brains are dependent upon to function properly. It's not saying you need something more to make you normal. It's saying you need more of something everyone else already has to make you healthy. The personality changes is one that's understandable and irrational at the same time. It's understandable in that you know who and what you are now, and you're comfortable with that. The thing is, these medications aren't just going to turn you to someone else. 
they might make you more organized, they might make you more relaxed, they might just keep you calmer. But what you've enjoyed and what you have an affinity for is still going to be there. You're not changing who you are, you're changing your health circumstances. The next one that I notice a lot of people having great concerns over is group therapy. Simply because they don't want to have to admit to a bunch of strangers that they have an issue, they're worried that they're going to be judged and laughed at. This one is entirely irrational and often stems from the thing that most commonly is used to treat and that would be anxiety issues, particularly social ones. Everyone is there because they need the help. They're not there for a laugh. They're not there because it's a private joke. They're not there to make you feel worse. They are there to feel better and help you feel better. And oftentimes these programs come with a system where you kind of get a sponsor or a partner, much like an addictions program, in order to support each other. These can form new social bonds. You can wind up forming great friendships within the group entirely. Or you could just wind up going there, counting on each other on the basic level that you need for the, gr the group's existence and otherwise carrying on about your normal life. Now this is the most common non-medication form used for primarily resource reasons, but also to remind people that they're not alone. And I think that makes group therapy pretty ideal for most circumstances. It's just a matter of getting yourself through the door the first time. And you may have trouble going back, but I imagine that it's not gonna be a worry of the idea of group therapy it's going to be the same sort of issue you have keeping to any social commitments that you do with anyone else oh I've got a party to go to suddenly half an hour beforehand where I would have to leave I don't feel like going anymore so I'm not finally we have one that most people probably picture when they're thinking of getting help for mental illness and that's going and seeing a psychologist or a counselor or a psychiatrist someone who's trained to some medical extent on these sorts of issues where you talk, you tell about your day, your experiences that relate to things that might be affecting your mental health, situations where you notice drastic changes in your mood or areas you're feeling that you could be doing better with and then responding with instructions or advice and possibly even medication. Now, at least here in Ontario, Going to see one privately, just finding one in the phone book and calling them up, is something that is going to be costly. Unfortunately, most insurance programs don't cover private therapy in such a manner. However, it is something that the OHIP program can cover to at least an extent if you can get a referral from a family doctor or if you need to go to an ER or psychiatric care facility and say, I need help and get an assessment. Most often this can be done in the form of a 72 hour hold where you go, they take your possessions and keep you there clothed and cared for and fed for a 72 hour period and under which you're under pretty constant observation just because they need to make sure that you're not posing a risk to yourself or others. They'll take minor notes on your behavior that way and as well someone will come and speak with you to directly assess you and they'll come up with an action plan that they think would suit you best and refer you to it. Of course, ultimately, the decision on to follow through with these things is entirely your own. But this is the best way to get through to what the professionals will feel is the best help for you. Now, if the professional methods aren't for you, sometimes you do have to think to reach out to others around you. Oftentimes, though you might find yourself relying entirely on one person. I can promise you that that person is not going to be able to do it all for you. And that's not me being cynical, that's me understanding that everyone has their life to live, everyone has their struggles, and there's going to be times where they are just not in a mind state where they can help you. As mentioned previously, I myself am affected by type 2 bipolar disorder, which is rapid cycling. This means that my lows are stronger and typically longer lasting than my highs. Now, at the same time, 
my symptoms are still quite mild. And I am also fortunate enough to be what's considered gifted in that I am one with a high intellect. This means based on my knack for looking into things myself, my ability to understand things quite easily, and my familiarity with psychological issues on a non-professional level, I often wind up being the support for pretty much anyone I know who has similar problems. That being said, I can't be there for everyone every day all the time. And I hate that. And I can promise you, even your friends who are healthy hate that too. They hate that they have to tell you no, they hate that they have to live their own lives while you're struggling, they hate that you are struggling. So as opposed to just one person, you need to make sure that if you can only reach out to people who are close to you, that you have a network, not just an individual. And at the same time, having such a network does not exclude you from any of the previously mentioned resources. These things need to work in tandem. You need to find the right combination of things for you. A lot of people, this will mean some form of therapy, possibly group, medication, and being able to count on their friends who have an understanding. I can promise you that most of the people in your life do want to try and make things easier for you. And while they may not necessarily be able to give you advice or relay on their own personal experiences with things similar to what you're going through, they're willing to be there to listen, to just be there in your presence supportively, to make you feel comforted. Most people want to do what they can. In closing, all I really want to stress here is that help is there for everyone who needs it. You need to make sure that people know that you need help. Plenty of people will come along and offer help to you. Plenty of people will tell you when you need more than you are currently getting. But in the end, you have to say, yes, I need it. Yes, please help me and get the help that you need. So once again, we're going to close off tonight saying, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.